The situation is a lot more nuanced than that. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 ways Crazy Ex-Girlfriend challenged societal norms. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at groundbreaking moments from the series that shine a spotlight on subjects that usually don't get a lot of screen time. If you're not up to date with the series, then consider this your spoiler alert. <laughs> I get it, I get it. We're so sweet together that it's almost nauseating. <laughs> Number 10. It represents bisexuals. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I like ladies and I like guys. Realizing that bisexuals are kind of invisible in TV world, the show's writers created bi characters in collaboration with GLAD, an organization that monitors representations of LGBTQ plus people in the media. I like both sexes. I'm a both sexual. Oh God, it feels so good to just say that out loud. The term is uh, bisexual. Mm. The romantic storylines of bi characters Daryl and Valencia focus on how they explore their newly discovered sexuality and how little their relationships differ from anyone else's. Oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> when Daryl decides to come out to his colleagues, in song of course, the lyrics are used to dispel common misconceptions about what it means to be bisexual. But that's not it, cause bi's legit. Whether you're a he or a she, we might be a perfect fit. Number 9. It empowers women. This show has been praised for its feminist content. And boy, does it ever do a lot to promote girl power. Squad goals! Stay together forever! Squad goals! Take control of the banks! Squad goals! Don't let a man come between us if he does! Shoot him in the head! Some of the best and strongest relationships in the show are between the female characters. And it's always great to see them have each other's backs. You know what, this woman's a goddess and a leader and you should have worshipped her. Yeah, and Rebecca is a super smart dynamo with the feminist bikini area that you should have treated with respect. The women are portrayed as strong, successful, and for the most part independent, without it ever being mistaken for bossiness. And when Rebecca starts to lose herself, a group of teenagers reminds her that she must always put herself first. Put yourself first, girl, worry about yourself. Make yourself sexy just for yourself. Number 8. It normalizes periods. Oh, no. It's just period day. Period day? Yay! Mm. Ovunation is the best. Despite being something that about half the world's population experiences at some point in their lives, periods remain a taboo subject. And that's something Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is trying to eliminate simply by, well, talking about it. You got anything? You got, uh, I don't know, puffy boobs, migraines, cramps, an urge to dip chips in frosting? Ooh. Oh, tonight. For example, Rebecca tells Paula that the reason periods are code blue is to perpetuate the patriarchal myth that women don't bleed, as commonly seen in tampon commercials. <sighs> okay, code yellow. Oh. What, what is this, what are you doing? Sorry, I threw away that color chart you gave me. Oh my god! Periods are code blue because blue is the color of the liquid they use in tampon commercials because men hate that women bleed. In another great moment, Rebecca and Paula talk about the joy of syncing up with your best gals. I'm so glad we cycle together. Mm. It's like we're our own little blood coven. However, the network drew the line at the song Period Sex, deciding that was going too far. Fortunately, that didn't stop showrunner Rachel Bloom, who plays Rebecca, from uploading the full video onto her YouTube account. Period Sex Period sex, put down a towel, pot it till it's dry with some period sex. Number seven, it gives men emotions. <laughs> <laughs> While we've been focusing on its approach to female centric issues, Crazy Ex Girlfriend challenges stereotypes about men too, in particular the idea that emotions aren't manly. This is best shown through the character Nathaniel, first introduced as the cold, uncaring boss. Too macho for naps. A nap? I don't nap. I'm a man. It doesn't take long before Rebecca gets under his skin, and he's forced to acknowledge his emotions. Thank God I don't have that in my life anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. The show addresses the trope even more explicitly with the song Fit Hot Guys Have Problems Too, where Nathaniel, White Josh, and Josh all sing about how being hot doesn't mean they don't have feelings. And by the end of the song, they're all ugly crying. 
because even fit hot guys cry. There's so much pressure when you're a fit hot guy. So just let us ugly cry. Number six, it destigmatizes abortion. Crazy Ex Girlfriend took a fantastic step forward in season two in addressing the stigmatization of abortion. I mean, this is what happens to me, right? I mean, I finally decide to apply to law school and that bitch fate just gets me knocked up. God, why did we decide to have sex again? It was such a mistake. When Paula realizes she's pregnant, just as she's about to start law school, she has to weigh up whether now is a good time for her to have another baby and ultimately decides to have an abortion. At no point in the episode is her decision up for debate, nor is Paula judged for it. While it's a minor storyline, viewers get to see what it's actually like for a woman to be faced with this decision. And she is celebrated for taking control over her own body. Mom, I'll get us since you just had an abortion. You're a good son, Brendan. Number five, it demystifies the female orgasm. I'm a king in the boudoir. Every woman I've ever had sex with has obviously orgasmed every time, especially my wife. We imagine a lot of women were grateful when the show broached this subject. Despite being clueless about female anatomy, Tim believes he has a 100% success rate in getting women to orgasm. I know what that part is, but that's not actually the important part. The important part isn't even on your stupid diagram. He can't even bring himself to say clitoris, and then tries to mansplain female pleasure to his female colleagues. But fortunately, Paula doesn't hesitate to shatter his illusion. Tim, you have never given your wife an orgasm, ever. Not even once. Bloom had to convince the network to let them say clitoris on the show, making it the first live action network series to explain what the clitoris is. Tim, uh, what? look at this scientific study. 70 to 80% of women only achieve orgasm from direct stimulation of the clitoris. <laughs> It's the anatomical source of basically all female pleasure. Number four, it tackles body image. It's a sexy getting ready song. The sexy getting ready song. The show never fails to redefine beauty standards, whether it's the sexy getting ready song or the desexualization of big breasts. I got them heavy boobs, heavy boobs. Dance like dying stars, I got them heavy boobs, heavy boobs. It's all too relatable to watch Rebecca as she waxes tweezes and shapes every part of her body to a song that mocks the unsexy and even painful reality of societal beauty standards. A first I make everything shiny and smooth Oh yeah oh, Cause I want my buck there to be so soft for you Prior to production, Bloom planned on training to get a quote TV body, but decided against it favoring instead to show audiences a more relatable body type. We love that there's a TV show that promotes body positivity and will happily show body shamers the door. Hey, am I uh, catching up on all the best ways to get a peach-shaped booty? No, because I love myself and I don't purchase any periodicals which engage in body shaming. Number three, it does not feature token characters. If someone asked, not me, but someone, what would you say you are? What? Crazy ex-girlfriend cheerfully celebrates diversity, but not in a way that feels forced. Whether the characters are black, Asian, Jewish, male, female, straight, or gay, it's an identity trait, rather than a lazy stereotype used as a plot point to drive the show. Say it. Dear God in heaven, please. Diverse? Yes! The characters are all different and flawed in their own ways, which makes them more real and easier to relate to. And this is White Josh, so named because he looks just like Josh, except for he's white. Also, my, my name is also Josh. The introduction of a second Josh, nicknamed White Josh, turns the concept of the token character on its head. And when Daryl suggests that White Josh should be called Gay Josh, the response he receives is as hilarious as it is insightful. It's just maybe your nickname should be Gay Josh instead of White Josh, because then people would know what's up. Why? We don't call Greg straight Greg. We don't call you old gay Daryl. Whoa, what? Number two, it calls out the patriarchy. You don't need to look much further than the show's name to see this one. We hope this helps. As well as reclaiming and redefining the crazy in the expression crazy ex-girlfriend, the show works hard to disband patriarchal views on women. From ideas about their appearance, 
to this nutty notion that women are too catty to be friends with each other. While there are so many great moments we could pinpoint to illustrate this point, nothing does it better than the season 3 song Let's Generalize About Men. Let's take one bad thing about one man and apply it to all of them. In this undeniably catchy number, the women turn the tables by making sweeping statements about men in a very self-aware and hilarious way. And why do men never listen and only think about themselves, as opposed to women who always listen and never think about themselves? Ooh, I hear you, girl. Number one, it portrays mental health issues respectfully. Your life is broken and boring. Your boyfriend does not want a baby with you. If I'm crazy, you made me crazier. It's hard to come by a show that portrays mental illness in an honest and considerate manner. But from the first episode of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend onward, we see Rebecca grapple with anxiety and depression. Excuse me, miss, are you okay? I don't know. It's heartbreaking to watch Rebecca consider suicide, but at no point is the incident glamorized or dramatized. Hi, everything okay? I need help. Her road to recovery in Season 3 begins with a new diagnosis, for which the writers actually consulted with psychiatrists. What's more, there's no facade that recovery is easy, but Rebecca's song Diagnosis gives that glimmer of hope that things can get better. But now there's no need for regret, cause I'm about to get a diagnosis. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.